So today I'm going to be speaking about uh, first the meaning of the prayer. Second is the difference between Salah and Dua. And I mentioned that a little bit last time, but today I'm going to be talking more about it. Uh, third, the benefits of the prayers. And the last thing is how to prepare for the prayer, which how to make wudu. All right. So salah, the root word in Arabic, salah. Okay. And it comes from sad, lam, alif. Okay. These are the three letters. And it means to do special physical movements and say some words. And these words have to be in Arabic. And it starts with takbir, when we say Allahu Akbar. And it's, it ends with taslim. Taslim means when you say salamu alaykum, salamu alaykum. All right? So, now when we say prayer in English, we also mean dua sometimes, right? So we have differences between salah and dua. And both of them in English translated by prayer. Because we know that, you know, uh, other faiths like Christians, when they talk about the prayer, it means just to close your eyes or focus your heart, you know, and talk to you, your Lord heart to heart or like, you know, uh, you know, or say the words what, that you want to your Lord. We have this prayer in Islam, but this is called dua. Okay. And you can do it in your language. You can do it in any place you want. You know, you can do it in the masjid. You can do it in your car. You can do it in your classroom any place of course except two places the bathroom because it's unclean and the grave okay you can make dua for the dead people but not to the dead people right, right. we can't pray to them but we pray for them right okay now the salah it has to be in arabic and it's like a ritual it has to be with a certain <coughs> movements they have to be certain movements and motions that we do to connect with allah right and it is very strict. And the reason why it's strict is because Allah, when it comes to the Salah, it's like, you know, when you go and speak with the Queen of England, for example, before you go there, they will tell you, they will tell you a lot of restrictions and things, how to speak with her, how to stand, how to smile, how to do th things, right? So what about Allah, who is the King of the Kings, right? That it is nothing like unto him, nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, is the creator for us. So when we stand in front of him, we have to be exactly like how Allah instructed us to stand. All right? And now his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So it has to be in Arabic and it has to be, uh, you know, and it is this for the sake of uniformity among Muslims too. Right? So there are three types of salah. Some people they are they, they say there are six, but I uh, but the the major the majority say there are three, and those are the easiest ones. The first one is called fard. Fard it means obligatory. And how many obligatory prayers do we have a day? Five exactly. So we have. I'm gonna be talking about these in just a second. So we have the five obligatory pr prayers, and they're called fard. Fard means like they are obligatory. You have to do them. All right. Then we have the Sunnah. The Sunnah, they are the ones that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to perform before or after the Fard. Okay. And I'm going to be talking about these next time, inshallah. Okay. That's called the Sunnah. And if you did not do it, Allah will not hold you accountable for it. But if you do it, you get more ajr. You get more uh, more rewards okay now the fort if you leave it Allah will hold you accountable for the fort mm -hmm. will ask you Allah why you did not pray on these days or on these times right mm -hmm. nafil it's an extra effort that you do for example if I prayed already my asr prayer it at home right mm -hmm. and I come to the masjid and I find that our group of people are already praying the asr prayer okay so you pray the asr with them again that's called nafil that means you do an extra prayer or you do the same prayer again, okay? And that's called nafil, all right? And by the way, the taraweeh, it's considered, by the way, sunnah and nafil. Sunnah because the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said it, did it, but nafil when it became jama'ah. Because the Prophet wasallam never prayed this, the taraweeh jama'ah. The first one who actually did the taraweeh as jama'ah was Umar ibn al-Khattab. 
the second Khalifa, and he was one of the uh, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Because he heard the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever did a sunnah, and sunnah it means way. So whoever did a way for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made people follow it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him in the, in the hereafter. And he was the first one to actually gather the Muslims because he came into the masjid one night in Ramadan and he saw some people there doing atikaf. Atikaf means like they stay overnight, you know, and pray. And he saw some people here are praying by themselves. Uh, two men are praying here to rakaz. Other people are just reading Quran in the back. So he said, no, we need to uni unite ourselves and so unify ourselves. And that's what he did. He gathered all the Muslims and we start praying the Jama'ah. And that's why it became a nafil that we do it as Jama'ah, but it is a Sunnah that we do it like the Prophet Sallallahu at the same time. Right? So, there are five times prayer, uh, five time, uh, five prayers, and those are the Fard, and those are the Fajr time. And this is, Fajr time is right at the down time before the sunrise. Okay? And uh, it goes, of course, it varies, you know, it depends on the season in the winter. It, the, the Fajr would be longer and it will be later. In the, in the summer, it will be shorter and it will be earlier, right? Dhuhr. Hmm? Yes, yes. And then we have the Dhuhr prayer. Dhuhr is noon, okay? And how do we know that it is noon time? It's like when you stand outside or you put a stick in the ground, the sun has to be vertical with that stick, so it's the, the shadow would be short, shorter than the stick, okay? Asr time, when the sun starts going like afternoon, right? Okay, and you see the shadow, the shadow has to surpass the length of that stick or the tree or the human body. Does that make sense? So once it surpasses it, like about one and a half, then we know that this is definitely asr time so we pray like that okay and then marib time which is right after the sunset once you see the sun sets behind the mountains or behind you know we know that this is sunset that's the marib time and then aisha when the the sky becomes completely dark okay because we know that it becomes the dusk time and then after the dusk it becomes like all dark so at the dark time this is aisha time Okay.